Mm, welcome to the video where we're going to take this um, Ionic Swiper and get access to the underlying Swiper library to do a bunch of amazing things today. So get ready and let's go. And before we get started, once again, please make sure you like and subscribe. So what we have here is a blank app using the new um, CLI um, with the view tag set. I'm going in and cleaning up the stuff we don't need. Um, we're going to remove all of the stuff inside of Ion Content, and what I'm going to do is we're going to we're going to show once again how to use the slider that um, Ionic provides. As I said earlier, what we're going to do is show you that you can get the basic stuff done, but you definitely have to include a ref to start to get access to the underlying Swiper JS functionality. So right now I'm just going to cut and paste the um, sample code over into my Ionic project. I already cop copied over the template. Now we're going to add the includes. And let's clean up the style stuff because I don't like to use any of that. It's just uh, for these type of demos, I just want to keep all the information right in front of you. All right, so we moved all the style stuff. And what do we got next? Um, now let's bring over the functionality because we're going we're gonna to need to do the setup and we're going to need to return some properties so that they can be utilized in a template. So we're just going to cut and paste that, bring that over. Um, I'll, I'll leave the link in there, which will um, point you to the Swiper um, API because it's that's the way to really get the true power to start to use the API. All right, so we have the slider basically running. Um, all right, I, I'm eating my words. I'm going to use the slide. Um, style just a little bit to set some default um, height width on the slides so that they're actually useful. The way they're set up by default in a documentation doesn't really do much for you. Um, put a little bit of color on this guy so that you can see them as you're sliding um, because that's really, I think, helpful. Okay, um, I don't know why I'm sitting here playing with these colors. doesn't really matter, but uh, actually... Okay, now next up, let's set the default um, padding so that we get a little edge around the side of them. Clean this up a little bit. Now you see we have our slides. They're moving along nicely. That's the default behavior. So everybody's happy. Everything's straightforward. I'm going to show you that the slide options are loading. I'm going to set the default starting slide to 2, so that means it showed a third slide. Remember, this is a zero base index. Now let's put it back to zero, and we are good to go. Okay, so that's the easy stuff. Um, what I'm going to do in the video is I'm going to add a previous button and a next button so that you can control the slides um, using the buttons. And when I do that, that's going to require us to access the Swiper JS API um, to move the buttons back and forth. Um, because that's going to show you how to get the ref in Vue.js to get access to the actual component that has the um, API functionality on it. Um, now we're gonna set up the style here for my little button area. Um, like I said, we're gonna have two buttons, a previous and next. We're using the default Ionic buttons. I'm not gonna get crazy with anything here. Um, just a previous button and a next button. Okay, and remember we have to come down here and we have to add the buttons to the import. And then we have to add the button to the actual component. And now my buttons are showing up, but that's not really where I want them. I needed them actually inside the content that I placed them below the content. So let's move them up and put them inside the content. And let's put a little bit of padding around the top of it so that it's not sitting right up underneath there. And let's make that a little bit bigger. Okay. Um, I've got to use pixels, so 16 picks. There you go. Now we push that down a bit. Mm, it looks a little bit better. Okay, so now we have your slider, we have our previous button, we have our next button. Okay, so what's next? Next we need to actually uh, get the ref. So let's first start out by defining the ref. And then now what you do is you do ref and you sign it. And my ref is called my slides. Now remember the ref needs to be unwrapped when you're inside the script and not wrapped when you're outside the script. So we are going to set up my slider, ref, set the default value to null. Don't know why it's popping out there. And then now we need to return it. So we will return it so we have access to it in the template. 
And to make sure that everything's working, what we'll do is on mounted, we will log out the um, reference and it should clearly be not null. And then, you know, there's just a, a little debugger, debugging way to determine that things are moving in the right direction. So now let's open up our Chrome tools one more time. And take a look down at the bottom. You can see we have the proxy object there. And if you open up the proxy object, you can see the target. And as you can see, um, see all the ion events and all the good ion stuff there. And what you'll notice is that the actual element is honestly missing. And that's the main reason why I wrote this video because I struggled to figure out how the hell do I get the element from the, uh, I just assumed I'm going to put the ref on there. And once I put the ref on there, that I could access the uh, element, but it turned out that that was incorrect. So that's what this, that's the main you know genesis. Of, oh, that's the main genesis of this video. That's how we got to where we are. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to listen to the click events um, to hit the previous slide and the next slide. So we're going to put um, we're going to listen for the click events on both of the buttons. And then since I'm going to listen to click events, we definitely need to have a function to call. So we'll have a previous slide function and a next slide function where we will actually get, take the reference and we will use it. And as you can see here, the magic to getting the reference is first of all, you have to unwrap the slide. My slide just gives you the value. Then you get the dollar sign element and that's the actual element that has um, the ability to get the swiper object for you. So as you can see the code that I'm logging out it's a promise so I need to make sure I put that promise on there okay and now let's start it over again and move it along and see when I click the button we get a bug statement another bug statement here we step and you can see that I get the element and sorry it's not zoomed in but if you look there you can see see it has the object type swiper and that is what we are trying to get access to so now I got the swiper and now, since I got the swiper, I get access to all of the swiper functions, all the swiper events, and I'm like, I'm down, as they say, we're down to the metal here. We're like, we're, we're past the ionic stuff and we're, we're getting access to the good stuff. So, from here, now, um, we can start to do things. So, the first thing we're gonna wanna do is, now that I actually have the swiper element, um, we're gonna call the functions or method for the previous slide when we click the previous button. This is also a promise, so we'll put the weight, a weight in front of it, and that should give us the behavior that we want. And if you, here's just a quick peek at the documentation. Let's scroll. There's a swiper, the modern touch slider, which is what underlies it. We click on API, click on methods. We can scroll down past the properties, down to the methods, and where are the guys? Here it is. There's the methods. There's a slide next and the slide prev. Oh, and looks like. Well, I'm going to duplicate them and I'm going to rename it and make sure we get the right function in here. Next slide and previous slide. All right. Everything looks good. Oh, well, let's make sure we expose the so we can call them inside of my template. Next slide, brief slide. That looks good. Now, what's next? Well, let's add our other additional button to support this. So we'll add our next slide button. I mean, not button, the click event. Sorry. Uh, it appears I recognize that I had the methods name wrong. It's slide previous and slide next. So let's remove our debuggers, our breakpoints. Let's run this guy. Okay, we get to the next slide. Next slide. And our buttons are working. We get access to the underlying element, which gives us access to the function, so everybody's happy. So that's the first part. But now let's get a little special in this video and let's see if we can actually enable and disable the buttons as you move along. So um, what we're gonna do is gonna listen for the slide did change event, which we will, um, Let's clean up these debuggers because we don't need them anymore. So what the idea is to listen to the slide to change event. And when the slide change event, when you change your slide, we will determine what slide you're currently on. 
And if you're on the first slide, then we want to disable the previous button. And if you're on the last slide, we want to disable the next button. So it doesn't make sense clicking on the next if there's no slide to go after. So as I said, we'll listen to the slide did change event. We're going to have our method called slide changed, which will expose here at the return. And now let's go create it. Oh, let's make sure I put the comments as I normally do, because after a while, these returns on the bottom can start to get uh, carried away. So let's separate out the properties and the functions so that's clear what's what just visually, and then now let's create our function. Slide changed. We don't necessarily care about the event that's coming back because we have access to the swiper object through the ref. So let's say quick comment here, when slide changes, enable and disable appropriate buttons. So that seems straightforward. Okay, now, Let's start to um, utilize my, my slide. I keep saying my swiper. Let's start utilizing my slide object. But we are going to need a um, reference because what we're going to do is we're going to set a property, a reactive property, um, to disable the, the previous button and the next button. I don't know why I type start. It's next and previous is what they really should be. So a Boolean. And we're going to set the default value to true because when the application starts up, the start button should be disabled. So that's what I want it disabled. And the next button should be false because we're starting on the first element of the. Um, we're starting on the first element in my list of slides. Let's get this caps out of there. Um, we are binding the value, so that's why we have the colon in the front. Um, and so we'll put in disabled. We're going to disable both of the buttons based on the state um, that we're getting returned. So we need to also make sure we return the properties in the bottom. So we're going to return the um, to disable the disable start button and disabled. Uh -oh. That should not be start. Disable start button, disable next button. Everything looks good. Now let's, hmm, what's going on? Directors require an attribute value. Oh, I put them in, but didn't actually put a value in them. So let's put them in now. Disable start button. Disable next button. Okay, that looks right. But that shouldn't be start, it should be prev, prev, previous, prev for previous button. And let's go clean this up down here, disabled, brief, and then we want to return disabled, brief. Okay, let's see what we get now. Let's see if my errors go away. No, what else is missing? Oh, I need to actually do something inside of my slide changed event. So let's just um, log out that I'm actually in the slide changed event. And uh, we'll do that to verify that this whole thing is working. So. No, we don't want that. We want that. Let's put that in there. And now let's click. And you can see I'm getting my slide changed event whenever I click the button and I change my slide. So I know that um, my event listener is working properly. Now let's do something when I hop in there. All right, so we're taking a code from before and we're going to use the same my slides value element to get the swiper element. And then now we are going to um, just to kind of not have to always be accessing um let's get some local variables here to keep track of the important values that we're going to work with as we try to set uh, the flags so we clearly want to know the number of slides so we'll get the slide length also remember that um, this is a zero base index so we're going to definitely have to account for that later and then we also want to get the active slide because as i said the idea is we want to know if we're on the first slide or the last slide um, because that's going to be important for um, disabling a button. All right. So now let's start to set up our variables. Remember, we need to unwrap them. So disable the previous button. We set the true or false. So we get these variables set properly here. So active slide is equal to zero. We want to disable the previous button. So it looks like that's what we're getting with the UI. Yep. 
So that's all cool. Okay. And then now we want to work on disabling the next button when appropriate. So we're going to do disable next button. Um, and that's not right. We need to make sure we get the value. So, and then now we will add the appropriate logic for um, setting the disable next button. So what we're going to do is we want to take a look at the slide length. So if the active slide is equal to the slide length, oh, but I need to count for my off by one. So that really should be a minus my slide. So I'm going to put it there. Now let's put it down here on the length. Slide length minus one. Now let's see if we get what we're looking for. Yep, on the last one it's disabled. And on the first one it is disabled. So um, you got to see how to actually get access to the swiper object, which is what you want um, to do some interesting things uh, with the slides inside your Onyx Framework app. Saw a little bit about setting up the slider. You saw a little bit about handling events and you saw a little bit about using the reference. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Please make sure you like and subscribe and uh, leave your comments below if there's anything else you'd like to see. Take care. Bye.